Hey guys, today's video is going to be rebuilding the uh, carburetor on this 5 horse Briggs. This is a generator, as you see, an older model Montgomery Ward uh, generator. And I'm also not on this video, since I have other videos on doing a, a valve job, reseating the valves. I'm going to do that on a, off camera. Uh, on the video, we're just going to concentrate on the carburetor here. And uh, first thing you want to do is get to it get the air filter off there yeah. and it'd be a good time to put a new air filter in when you got it all apart yeah. and uh, you pretty much have to take the muffler off to get to this top bolt here and you got another bolt hidden down here and you got your uh, throttle linkage here we'll take a closer look at it and uh, get it loose once you get that loose and you also have a bracket down here coming off the bottom of the gas tank it has your throttle control mechanism on it you gotta take that loose and take the governor spring loose just to get all this off. But uh, since I'm taking the carburetor off the tank anyway, I'm gonna try to leave that alone at the bottom and just lean this back since I'll be taking the carburetor off the tank anyway. So we're gonna try it that way. Uh, I don't wanna fool with the spring because it's easy to get that mixed up. Uh, now if you buy an actual carburetor kit, you're gonna be getting this, uh, your adjustment screw with it. But uh, all I'm gonna be replacing is your uh, pump diaphragm over here and the gasket that goes between it and I'm going to try to clean it while it's off and I also got a new intake gasket for it and a new head gasket which like I said I'm going to do the head gasket and the valves off camera because I already got uh, several videos on how to do uh, reseating valves and everything and uh, so yeah let's go ahead and get started I'm going to get something to fit these bolts on the exhaust here you might want to uh, get a uh, exhaust gasket too while you're at it I didn't get one in this case uh, We'll have to see if this one's all right or not. All right, we're gonna get these bolts loose. Seven sixteenths drive. You get these little locks from here. These are already bent out, but you're supposed to you're supposed to be bent on the screw to keep them from working loose. This motor was running, but uh, it was running pretty rough. And you couldn't adjust the carburetor in, and you can see gas seeping up around this. So I'm gonna try to see what that does first. Looks like the gasket stayed intact. I'll clean it up real good before it's put back together. Okay, now you can get to your two uh, carburetor bolts a little easier. Uh, this one's the easiest one to get to. The other one's down hidden down here. This is your uh, governor, your throttle setup when it's to let it idle or let it run at full throttle. I'm going to try a screwdriver on it first because sometimes it will... Uh, Come loose pretty easy, and other times, so that's, that was real loose there. At the bottom, you got a wrench out, and it's real hard to get to. Like I said, you got your linkage here. You see it hooks here, and it goes down to the governor arm. Once you get the carburetor loose, you should be able to take that loose. If not, you can take this bolt out right here and uh, just take this whole uh, piece loose. Might have to do that. It's a weird setup on these. You get this linkage going up and down, this one going side to side like that. But and these bolts are 3 8 drive. It's real hard to get to this bottom, so I'm gonna go and get this bottom one off camera. Okay, I got the two bolts loose and the gasket fell down in here. I'll get it out later. But uh, like I said, you always want to replace your gasket. Here's your new one. If you don't have a gasket, uh, you can get by with uh, putting like former gasket or Permatex or a blue R2V on it, something like that. And you can get by with it, but it's best to have an actual gasket. This is your uh, oil breather tube. These usually tear, which ain't a real big deal, but you can replace them if you, uh, if you don't like that. And you see this one's leaking oil real bad here. And, uh, but on a generator like this, it's hard to get to, the, to replace this because you got to taper on there like a flywheel. It's real hard to get loose. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a, the carburetor off the tank. You got one, two, three, then your carburetor lift off and you got your pickup tubes in there. So we're going to do that and uh, get the gas out of this tank. It's got old gas in it. It's like about half full. Uh, I didn't see no rust in it, so that's a good thing. So we'll go ahead and get the carburetor off and uh, go from there.
So you just use a screwdriver. If for some reason yours are rusted or stuck in there, you can uh, take a chisel and uh, get them to turn out like that. It's a lot, real hard to do. Most of the time they'll come right out. This one over here holds the uh, oil breather tube. Sometimes uh, the gasket will stick real bad on these and you gotta pry up. This one's been leaking, it's uh, pretty sealing. It's not sealing at all and there may not even be a gasket on it. Okay, I'm gonna to take this loose just to get the linkage loose. So I'm gonna do this off camera. We'll show putting it back together. Okay, once you get your, all your bolts loose and your linkage loose, you can pull the carburetor loose like this. And watch your screen there. Make sure it don't get stuck. A lot of times the problem will just be these screens plugged up. You see that one's almost plugged off completely there. So I'll clean that. Might have to take it out and blow some carburetor cleaner through it. You can see this is all gummed up. You gotta get the gasket off here. Get everything good and clean. And uh, try not to drop anything down in the tank. Cause, uh, it's got like a little reservoir up here on the top. And uh, it's easy to drop something down in there. But we're probably gonna be draining the gas out of this anyway since it's got old gas in it. Okay, the gasket's on the tank. I thought it was on the carburetor here. This is just so much uh, dirt build up here. But the gasket's on the tank here. You can see, see it's starting to come loose here. So I'm gonna get that pulled off here and clean it out. and. Get the old gas out of the tank and uh, we'll get back to you on uh, cleaning the carburetor up and taking it apart. Alright, I'm going to get ready to start taking the carburetor apart. I done sprayed off the outside of it some. And uh, you notice your pickup screen here is kind of about half plugged up. I'm going to try to clean it with the wire brush here a little bit. Best to take them off, but I hate doing that because half the time you can't get them back on. I'm just going to spray it out. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the uh, diaphragm out of it. This basically acts kind of like a fuel pump. Take these four screws out here. You usually have to take a screwdriver and kind of pry it like that. Yeah. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Usually what wears out is these flappers, your your valves here. It's usually what wears out. But uh, I think I got a got a new spring for it too. Spring is kind of rusted. That right there could cause a problem. Uh, yeah, here's the kit I got for it. This is more of a universal type. You see the holes are a little bit different, but it should line up properly. So I got the parts for the model number and engine. This is a 1980 model, model 13 Briggs. Uh, before I start putting the new parts in it, we're going to spray all the passages out with the carburetor cleaner. You got these two holes right here you want to spray through it and spray the body of the carburetor out. As you see these have a spiral plate inside there. You got to clean all that out and uh, you want to take your adjustment screw out and take the nut out and clean all this out. Uh, like I said, if you buy an actual kit, it'll come with a new needle valve. This one actually looks like a new one. so. Uh, you can see there, so we'll have to go from there. But I'm gonna do the spraying off camera. I'm gonna go ahead and take this nut out. It's half inch. Got a washer on here too. And you got your actual jet inside here, which most of the time you can't get these out, but I'm gonna try. If you can't, I'll show you what to do to clean it. And this one's actually coming out. It's surprising. You can actually see through this one. A lot of times it'll plug up completely and the motor won't run. You still want to spray it off because it'll be dirt on the outside of it. And you got passages in this plate here too between this. And right here, you gotta clean all that out. So I'm gonna do all the spraying off camera and get right back to you and put it back together. All right, we're gonna get ready to start putting this back together here. First thing you wanna do is put the spring in here. With the uh, washer spacer on there. 
You want to make sure you're all your carburetor cleaners out before you start putting it back together. The carburetor cleaner will mess up the uh, new diaphragm there. You want to kind of look through there, you'll see the diaphragm there. You got to make sure it's lined up. Get all four screws started. These in a crisscross. They don't have to be very tight at all. Barely got a snow. Okay, there's that part. Let's go ahead and put this back in here. Put the jet back in there. You barely got a snug, guess. So it don't take much at all. Just a little tiny bit. And you gotta get this started. And don't forget the washer on there. The washer acts as a seal. And let's get that snug a little bit. And then on these, what you gotta do is screw it in all the way until it just bottoms out. Then two turns out, that'll get you started. And uh, it should at least try to run with that. Now we'll go ahead and get to get this back on the tank here. Okay, we're gonna get ready to put the gasket on here. And you see it just kind of lines up like that. And you can see the three holes there. Then we drop the carburetor down on top of it. Okay, let me get these lined up. Let's get them all started. And these don't have to go very tight at all either. Just going into the tank, you don't want to strip that out. You want to get these pretty snug. You get it tight enough. You get it, you don't get it tight enough, the gasket will leak. If you get it too tight, you'll strip it out or break a bolt in there. You don't want to do that. These tanks are expensive if you can find them. Hey guys, a little side note on this. If you seen there, when it was before I started, it had this linkage hooked into this, and that was wrong. It was working, trying to work backwards. Hooked it over here where it was supposed to be, and adjusted the governor. Adjusted the governor here by turning the adjustment screws on there, and also had to bend the linkage where the springs hooked up to tune it. You see this right here. You got to bend that to shorten the or lengthen the spring to get the RPM adjusted right. It's hard to get it precise in one of these. I got it pretty close. It's putting out 120 volts, and it sounds about right. So it should be close enough for what you're going to be using it for. So. All right, guys, I got everything put back together. Got the linkage freed up. I'm going to see if it's going to start. Move the camera just a little bit here.
So well, guys, I guess that's about it. Put the air filter back on it and you're pretty much good to go. So if you got any questions or comments, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.